Now that Grafton is complying with the Prevailing Wage Act, my office today is releasing half a million dollars that is currently owed to them for work they've done so far on their broadband installation. Now we want them and every other company doing business with the state of Illinois to know that we mean business. The executive order I signed two years ago was no idle threat. The actions we are announcing here today show my executive order has real teeth that will be used to make sure that everyone follows the rules and respects their workers. And on behalf of the over 900,000 working men and women that the Illinois AFL-CIO represents in Illinois, I want to thank Comptroller Mendoza for demonstrating how state government can be a watchdog over an area of law where our brothers and sisters in the building trades have previously had to fend for themselves. Comptroller Mendoza has spent her entire career in public service trying to find ways to help working people. She recognized early in her term as Comptroller that her office could use its fiscal oversight authority to enforce provisions in our Prevailing Wage Act. Two years ago, the AFL-CIO applauded the bold step she took to create the executive order that has allowed her office to investigate and withhold payments to contractors willfully underpaying workers on public works projects using taxpayer dollars. So I'm a 56-year member and 47 years as a full-time union official. And I can tell you what we're witnessing today we did not have in our arsenal 20, 30, 40 years ago. It's unbelievable the tools that we have today that we did not have. In 1974, when we had a situation like this, we were at the National Labor Relations Board with an attorney being paid by our members. We were in the court system and a federal judge with an attorney paid by our members. Now we have our elected officials just taking this same burden on that's holding up a check. And you understand, I know all the union officials here know that when we go to the labor board and court, that job's continuing on, the paychecks are going, and a lot of times the, the job is over and they're out of state and we never see the people or the workers. We've got a mechanism here, thanks to our Comptroller Mendoza, to stop that. The beneficiaries of our actions that started with a complaint filed by a union were Grafton's non-union employees, who we won back $61,000 for. I take my role as Illinois' Chief Fiscal and Accountability Officer very seriously. When a company getting state funds on a project shortchanges the working men and women of Illinois by not paying them the prevailing wage, I will not hesitate to hold up any future payments from the state of Illinois until they follow the law. My office will continue to monitor and investigate complaints and work with the respective agencies involved on compliance with the Prevailing Wage Act. The best option to avoid fines, to be a good employer, and to stay on good terms with the, with the state is really simple. It's just to pay your employees a prevailing wage to comply with the law. If any state contractor or subcontractor does not pay a prevailing wage, rest assured, I will vigilantly watch out for the rights of Illinois workers.